What's up everyone, it's Aaron. I'm here today in the studio to record a new episode of Behind the Image. And I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. Today, instead of hopping into Photoshop, we're gonna stay right here in the studio. I'm gonna walk you through the lighting, and I'm gonna draw the lighting setup for you so it keeps it a little more personal and hopefully a little bit easier to understand. Today, we're gonna to break down a recent image that I did of Tiffany Maximuk in a beautiful dress inside of the Colorado Springs School. A lot of you have been talking about it lately, and I want to show you exactly what we did so that you can get out in the field and do it yourself. Before I hop into the lighting diagrams on the whiteboard, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what I was using that day. This was a big lighting setup, but it's not crazy complicated, and I want to explain exactly why I was doing what I was doing. For starters, there's a ton of huge windows, and I wanted to make it look like there was sunlight coming in through those windows. What you need to understand about making sunlight or rays of light is that the light actually needs to be hard. Sometimes people think, oh man, I have all this haze in the air and I want to see these big beams of light coming in, but for some reason it just looks glowy and kind of fuzzy. And that's because the light source is too soft. So for instance, if you were to take a big soft box and put it outside those windows and blast it through, you probably wouldn't see as many rays. So what I did is just simply used seven inch reflectors put those right onto the ELB 500 and put them outside up high and pointed down. You really want to get them angled down so they're like this. And when they come through the window, they're gonna give these great shafts of light. Now I had two heads per window just to get a lot of light rushing in. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is the fact that there was three windows. This is something I had to think about a little bit. I needed beams of light coming through the first two but I needed light coming through the last set of windows because there was a mirror on the wall. So anytime you deal with mirrors, you need to make sure that there's lighting in the place where the mirror sees. So for that, what I did was grab one of these handy dandy shoot through umbrellas. I'm not gonna open this because it's super gigantic. And I actually put two heads inside of it to just kind of blast some light through the window and give it a little bit of soft fill. This is something that it's a little bit technically complicated, but not really. When you look at a window and you, what you see in it, you have to light it. And so I knew I wanted to see the wall that was gonna be in the window behind her. And so I put a big light source outside of it as well. Now, one thing I don't have with me that I did use that day was a 69 inch Octobox on an ELB 1200. And that was just off to the side inside of the room to create this really beautiful soft fill light and I wanted to make it feel like it could have been coming from anywhere, like it was bouncing around the walls, around the ceilings, and it was falling right onto her. That's why the big light source. I had it up super high, way up near the ceiling, pointed kind of down across, and I had it at a lower power because we already had a lot of light coming into the room, but I wanted to clean up the shadows just a little bit. So in all reality, the setup didn't take me that long, and that's because I thought through what I was doing before I ever got on set. I knew what we wanted it to look like, and I had an idea in my mind of where everything needed to go. I had scouted it online, I'd looked at the room, I'd looked at the windows, and then it was just a matter of setting it up. The big takeaway from this today is making sure if you want those shafts of light, you use hard light sources. So don't put big soft umbrellas and things like that. If you wanna create beams of light, put on things like reflectors and grids, and that'll give you that beam of light effect. So now that we've talked a little bit about the lighting, Let's talk about the setup. So let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk about where all these lights were and why I was putting them there. For starters, this room was beautiful. It's in a school here in Colorado Springs called the Colorado Springs School. And it's this very cool Victorian-esque look. And even the wallpaper was actually made out of um, cloth. So it wasn't wallpaper. It was like these beautiful baffled cloth walls. But we knew when we got there that we wanted it to be really dramatic and we wanted to have beams of light coming through. So here's how the setup looked. It was a big rectangular room and there were giant windows. So there was one giant window towards the back, second one here, that was actually where the door was as well, and then there was another one here. And then an important thing to note was that there was a mirror right here on this wall the model was right in this area. Say this is the model. And then we were shooting from this side of the room. So we'll just put a little camera right there. 
So before I get too far, one of the things I forgot to mention was that I was using a hazer and the hazer was back here in this back corner of the room. I've been at, having a lot of people ask me, are you using a hazer or are you using a smoke machine or fog machine? I am definitely using a hazer and this is why. Hazers put out a really nice fine mist kind of slowly and they keep running over time. So they fill the room really, really nicely. Whereas smoke machines kind of put out these big puffs of smoke and not only are they less translucent, meaning you don't really get as nice of a light quality from them, they also tend to be a little bit blue and they kind of get these big clouds. So instead of having like hanging haze, you have these big clouds of smoke coming through, which isn't really what we wanted. So that being said, the room was filled with haze and I put the two ELB 500s in the first two windows. So you have a seven inch reflector here. You guys are gonna see how terrible at drawing I am. Here, here, and here. So these are all seven inch reflectors. Then here in this window is where I had my umbrella and there was another two heads. And those were actually ELB 400s sitting in here. Now these are the ones that I was telling you about that were designed to create the beams of light coming in through the windows. And they are up nice and high and they're pointed down. These two here, their sole purpose was to balance light into this part of the room so that when this mirror showed up in my camera, I knew that I was going to be able to see and it wasn't going to go dark. And it created this really beautiful gradient. If you look at the images, you can see them. I'll pop them up for you guys. So that was my final setup for the outside of the building. So it's six heads total on the outside, 500s, 400s with seven inch reflectors there. And then over here is a 69 inch octobox. Let's see if I can draw an octobox. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is my 69 inch octa. Now, I really just, I didn't want you to think about that light. I wanted that light to be in there to fill in all these beautiful details on the dress, on the floor, on the walls, but I didn't want you to think, oh man, there's a big, huge octobox in there. I just wanted it to look natural. So I had it up really, really high on a pretty low power and it was way off to the side. So just to kind of fill in and push in some light into those shadows. So that's it. That's the lighting setup for this. It's nothing super complicated. And I know sometimes it seems daunting when you say, oh my gosh, we did a, seven light setup or you know, whatever this is, seven lights. But really it's just thinking through the situation. I knew what I wanted my light to look like and that dictated where the lights need to be and how they need to be set up and where they need to be placed. So big takeaway from this one today is to know what you're trying to accomplish when you show up on set. Is it beams of light? Is it soft light? Are you lighting an entire environment? and then just think through it. And really, if you break it down section by section, which is what I did here, it's easy to then set them all up, get your shot, and keep on going. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments below. You can also shoot me an email and I will get back to you as quick as I can. You guys are great. Until next time, be awesome.